these five garden designers will compete for the title Super Garden 2016. To win, they will each have five weeks to design and create a unique garden that proves they're ready to join the best of the professionals. The winning garden will be recreated at Ireland's premier garden show, Bloom, and will be representing Coopernall and Woody's at the festival. Each garden designer will have the help of our mentor, a passionate gardener who has been teaching design for 15 years, Monica Alvarez. The key word here is planning and planning seriously. Five garden designers, only one will make it to bloom. The third designer to take up the challenge is Rachel Gerrard. From Dublin, Rachel made a big career change five years ago. I was a legal exec for about 17 years and I had the opportunity to study horticulture at the Botanic Gardens. I loved it, so I decided to do the degree. Rachel has just completed four year study with the Botanic Gardens on Blanchardstown IT. I've picked up some practical skills and a lot of theory on the way. I, you know, have a good plant knowledge and I'm now hoping to combine all that now with some creative flair to create a show garden. We've selected this almost square back garden for Rachel in Tyrrellstown, West County, Dublin, belonging to Franco-Irish couple Tony and Laura, who have turned the house into their dream home. But sadly, everything dies in the garden. It's upside down now, isn't it? Upside down and inside out. Uh, <laughs> we have a half-dead maple tree and, and a non-functional veg patch. Um, so yeah, it, it's a perfect space to um, ignore. I'd love to be able just to turn my head, look at the window and say, wow, that's my garden. But now it's like, oh no, that is my garden. <laughs> We'd like a garden that we can relax in, something that's easy to maintain, yeah. um, a nice space where we can sit out and enjoy, but also where Sophia can wander around the plants and, yes. and that we can relax. Um, did I say we could relax? Yeah. Tony can certainly relax, but Rachel will have to keep her eye on the prize. Her budget is €5,000 with free hard landscaping. The design must have impact if it's to be recreated at Bloom. I would like to create a cottage-style garden but in an urban setting. Ideally with, say, edible plants and plenty of colour. I have all the theory now, um, uh, but now it's time to put it all into practice. This is Rachel's design. A vast patio will become an extension to the home and a family-friendly planting scheme of non-toxic thornless plants will answer the homeowner's brief on child safety. Mentor Monica wants to find out more about the non-poisonous planting. In terms of the planting, what have you thought for a planting? Plant edible, non-toxic, uh, soft plants, you know, no thorns. Fruit trees? Like yeah, I'd hope to incorporate so, yeah. fruit trees, um, apple, pear, hopefully, mm -hmm. and maybe some plum. Safe environment. Yeah. It's not Monica deciding who makes it to bloom. That's down to the Super Garden judges. And Leone Cornelius, Woody's design ambassador, is championing Rachel's plant choices. I think the fact that she is focusing on edible plants and non-toxic plants is a very strong part of the concept. If this theme of, of edible planting is carried through and you can get out there and work mm. and enjoy the garden, that's something that not, not every designer brings to the table. It's not going to just be a finished garden that you can entertain. Mm -hmm. It's a space you can go, in, go out and actually do some gardening. To make it beautiful as well, yeah. um, because it's not just this, it's also a show garden. It is a great entertainment space. Mm. Plenty of room for parties and dinner and family. Right now, all this is hinging on is the implementation. It mm. needs to be executed yeah. perfectly to even stand a chance. Rachel now has five weeks to bring her plan to life and create a garden that is worthy of a place at bloom. Welcome to the, the quagmire. <laughs> Helping her on the road to the Phoenix Park are family, friends and dad, who has the best seat in the house. Well, I'm a daddy's girl anyway. <laughs> No. Oh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the discovery of two mature, non-toxic bushes gives Dad a well-earned break and Rachel something off-plan to consider. I was going to take out this viburnum, but I think actually I might leave it. I mean, it's, it's perfectly healthy. And that one as well, again, I might just cut it down, neaten it up. But I think they're salvageable, yeah. I think they live another day. <laughs> yeah, we won't kill you right now. <laughs> now, just kind of hold the palatin. 
Now just go with that lot. One, two, three. Yeah. I'm actually, it's, I love this. This is a great cry. Much hurt. This is the easy part. It appears smashing into the newly constructed shed wall was also easy. Is this our first casualty? You caught me there and I thought it was a concrete wall. <laughs> and it's only a bit of timber and a bit of mesh. Mm. So I only touched it with the digger. <laughs> only touched off it. And homeowner Tony is not too concerned. Is this, is this a sign that I think well, we're going to go for the rest of the And with the old patio up, the skip is full. A day completed. Great start, great work. I'm right. delighted. Yeah. Well, Thank well. you. Woo! Okay. The gang played an absolute blinder. The entire garden is cleared and the skip is full. So, yeah, that's a good day's work. Weather can impact on progress, so Rachel is making the most of the sunshine. Shake before opening. <laughs> Rachel is enveloping the garden with morning breeze, a light blue on the panel fence. I like it, it's nice and bright. They say you make hay while the sun shines. I mean, seriously, we're going to have to do as much as possible today. Carp diem, seize the day. Because Tempest View just... <laughs> time flies. <laughs> Grant, right. Dad is here to help lay the new patio foundation. But first, he has some housekeeping. We only touched it. Yeah. Let that set a bit. The patio is a major design statement, and Rachel must plan the foundation. Yeah, that's fine. So that's massive. But anyway, there's loads of planting. We can put plenty in there. Yeah. And plenty over there. Oh, it's, it'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Square. Rachel casts her paving lines. On the inside. On the inside. <gasps> now I'm going to put the block on the wrong side of the line. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a whole other pattern. Also being painted is the shed door in a popping sweet Sunday. There's a limited budget and limited time for designers to complete their gardens. At almost the halfway mark, this garden is not showing signs of progress. While she waits for her paving to arrive, Rachel is not going to panic just yet. I'm not worried at the moment. Uh, maybe that's naivety. <laughs> no, I'm not worried. I'm sure it'll be a complete panic attack at the end. But I am known as uh, lastminute.com, so that's okay. <laughs> Might change the habits of a lifetime. <laughs> Rachel is not worried, but homeowner Laura is concerned with the lack of progress in Tyrrellstown. When I see the garden now, I'm just I know, terrified yeah. the deadline going to be gone I know. and I am nothing too. will be there. <laughs> that and does not sound good. I will <laughs> finish with a not super garden. No, no, it now um, looks worse than it did at the start and have actually wrecked your garden. But it will be beautiful at the end, I promise. <laughs> I trust you. I trust you. Well, you better be good. You better be good. Do good. Oh, God. Ooh. Yeah, I know. No yeah. pressure. <laughs> With two weeks to go, Monica pays a visit, and she is also expecting to see a lot more. I, I didn't know what I was going to see today, but yeah. I was hoping to see, see more, more. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like I, mm -hmm. I, I don't see even one third of the garden being done, yeah. and we're halfway, so that my maths, mm -hmm. you know, what's Yeah, I'm aware we're actually um, behind schedule. Yeah. yeah. It would kill me if I didn't get it finished, you know, I would hate to think that I would leave it a garden half done and not um, completed. We'll all have to pick up the pace and uh, really get cracking at it now. Yeah. You know, um, my nickname is uh, Rush Hour Rachel. So uh, I do tend to, you know, there's a big spurt at the end and it's done. But I, I, I you know, I get it over the line. You also planned on the shed. Yeah to have herbs and what yes. way is that going to work? How are you going to hang that? Or? Yeah, um, well, I, my original plan was to have some kind of shelving that okay. you'd have troughs of herbs. Now, I might just be able to get troughs attached directly onto the wall. Okay, when I you're think. saying might, that means you still yeah, yeah, haven't so seen it, you still haven't... Yeah, I haven't seen uh, the... ...made a solid decision. No. It probably is true to say that Rachel does not have a plan or a schedule. This seems to be happening to you. Mm. You have a lot of mites. Yes, that's yeah. a lot of mites and not a okay, lot of... Okay, so definitely. maybe from now on it's going to have to be, I will. Yeah. And some, just 
a solid decision that I will have this. There appears to be a lot of doubt on what's going to happen next. There has to be a plan. I hope you have nocturnal lights. Yeah, <laughs> burning the midnight oil. Yeah, I think we'd we'll be here till yeah, yeah. we we'll be here till all hours, all right. But definitely, the key word here is planning, and planning seriously. Coming up. <laughs> Everything is last minute. Oops. There's a dash to Rachel's photo finish, but it's not without bumps along the way. <laughs> and the judges arrive. There is one plant that is actually poisonous. In five weeks, one of these gardeners will join the professionals at Ireland's premier garden show, Bloom, in the Phoenix Park. Their challenge, to design and build a garden that is exceptional. The winning design will be recreated at Ireland's top garden festival to represent Woody's and Cooperno. Rachel Gerrard was given Laura and Tony's back garden to transform in Tyrrellstown in County Dublin. The Franco-Irish couple would like a child-friendly entertainment space. I'm thrilled. I can't believe that I actually had this, have this opportunity, but at the same time, I'm terrified. Rachel has designed a cottage garden in an urban setting. A vast patio area will become a family entertainment space. And a non-toxic planting scheme makes the garden safer for the couple's daughter, Sophia. Rachel has been waiting on a delivery of her hard landscaping. Oh, this sounds like a truck. Oh, wow, yeah. The patio area takes up almost 40% of her design, so progress cannot happen without it. Oh, my God. And today is her red letter day. It's like Santa's arrived. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Rachel has roped in family and friends to help with the final push in her garden. This was supposed to be an invitation to lunch, wasn't it, Susan? <laughs> yeah. We were conned. Time is fast running out. The light tones in the paving will reflect light into the space. But first, Rachel is getting camera ready. Seen it all now. Put a bit of oil oil around me. <laughs> Rachel's nickname, nickname is Rush Hour Rachel. <laughs> Everything is last minute. <laughs> So you have, where's Rush Hour? And everyone knows it's Rush Hour Rachel. Well, they certainly keep you grounded. <laughs> they wouldn't let you get a big head. <laughs> this year, the designers have an added challenge of taking an interior item and bringing it to their outdoor space. Rachel found a mahogany coffee table in Oxfam, and it's getting a new lease of life with seagrass. Also on the list today, trellis. But I just want to hide next door's shed. And also, it's a medium for the plants to grow up upon, you know? Just cut that. It'll just look narrower. Um, just make that piece narrower. Yeah. I have to shorten the trellis and, to make it fit. Oh, <laughs> fuck! <laughs> it's not meant to be a pantomime, really. This is a family garden, and Oreo, Laura and Tony's rescue dog, is loving all the attention. Power tools, very sexy. Charlie's Angels, man! <laughs> that's good, that's good, that's good. Oh. It's right. <laughs> times like this when you really find out who your friends are and they really they come out and they support you and they're there for you. It's been fantastic and I, I can't thank them enough. She's going to take us on a holiday. She is. Oreo approves of the new patio. A key part of Rachel's plan is to have a garden full of non-toxic plants, making it safer for children. I want to create an edible garden with culinary herbs and some colour as well. So if they're not edible, at least they will be non-toxic. Put a lot of thought into my choice of plants. Foliage, bark, all those things I've considered so that when you look out the window or you're out in the garden at any time of the year, there's something interesting to look at. The garden seat is moved into position and last minute Rachel is proving herself in the final hours. Each stage you have to tick it off and uh, now we can move on from that then. All the, the little pieces of the puzzle are coming together. And it's going to be gorgeous. <laughs> she says very confidently. <laughs> One week before the judges arrive, mentor Monica is back on planting day and she's got a trick to get things rolling. Ah. Very good. Right. Okay. Very good. Let's, yeah. let's go home, babies. Red bark cherry is going in. Ooh. <laughs> what? Yeah. Give a bit of canopy as well yes. for from the house, so it's great. Oh, the grass is going to get destroyed. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> I'm just wondering, because there are two, that they might be better if they frame 
One each side. One each side. Yeah. Oh, Oops. careful. <laughs> there? Yeah. That might be a bit more balanced. No? I like it better there. Yeah. Maybe one at either side of the of this little triangle, what yeah. do you think? Oh, that's fun. You feel about okay. it being here instead. That is better. That is better. <laughs> that is better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm relieved to tell the truth. <laughs> We have a cherry, we have a pear, we have a plum, we have two married apples. Yeah. <laughs> and with the basic structure of the trees planted, Monica's work here is done. But her dance card has one more name on it, Mr. Cherry Tree. Let's tangle. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. Honestly, I think the garden is gorgeous. <laughs> I want that for myself now. Five weeks ago, this was the space Rachel was given on which to create her super garden design. She promised to deliver a space that would be safe for a young family while providing a place to entertain. And this is Rachel's entry to the competition. I really want this garden to go to bloom. I'm extremely proud of it. There's a lot of hard work and effort went into it. I hope that they, they can see that there's been a good attention to detail in terms of quality and finish. Creating this garden has been an incredible experience and whatever the future holds, the future is bright. It's assessment day and the judges are making their way to Rachel's garden. I would love to recreate this garden in bloom. What a way to start your career as a garden designer. Leonie Cornelius, Roisin Lafferty and Gary Graham are here to inspect every element of the design to determine if this is the super garden that will go to bloom 2016. It's time for Rachel to face the judges. Rachel, congratulations on your garden, well done. Thank you. And are you happy with everything you've achieved? Yeah, I'm very happy actually, yeah. yeah. Anything you'd like to change? Um, well, there's a few more bits I'd like to do, but I ran out of time. I suppose maybe I could be honest and say my time management mightn't have been great, so. And what, what about your budget management? How'd that go for you? Because it's quite a tight budget, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, I'm un actually under budget. <laughs> really? Yeah. I've done very well in terms of um, help and stuff, so that's where I made the savings. And could you not have added more volume, more scale, if you used all of the budget? I know the idea is to have instant impact. At the same time, if I overly crammed plants into the... Into the uh, it, would look, it would just look cluttered. Rachel, one of your main concepts was to have a garden that was non-toxic and um, edible, most of them. There is one plant that is actually poisonous. Um, it's the Solanum crispum. Um, yeah. But it's very pretty. <laughs> it's very but if you think about you know, yeah, the, no, the child yeah. growing up and thinking it's planted right beside a red currant. So if actually, it is planted beside something that's, that's non-toxic and edible, it would be very confusing because the berries that or on that Solanum would be toxic. Yeah, well, I'll have to whip that out. Do you think with the budget that you had left over, you could have maybe bought more accessories for the garden? To be honest, I just thought, no, I keep it simple. It's, it's, not, it's not adding in any way to the design. And um, there was never going to be a mirror ball in this garden. You know, I'm not going to have um, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I leave that to other designers. I, it's just uncluttered, simple, and sometimes less is more. Less is, can definitely be more, and some of the best designers base their whole designs on minimalism and absolute perfection. Do you think you've achieved that? Well, I can't say it's perfect, no. <laughs> um, but I, I did try and keep the lines as, as sharp as possible. Um, but, uh, no, perfect, no. <laughs> so is it good enough for Bloom? Um, 
I hope so. But uh, yeah, I think, well, yeah, I think it is good enough for Bloom, yeah. So what are the big impact, the big wow factors in this garden that would make this a show garden? Well, I think the, the design of the patio, the planting, um, obviously I put more planting in uh, for impact at Bloom, but um, overall, I think the garden itself is the wow factor. Rachel, well done on your first garden. You did a great job. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Overall, I think the judging went quite well. You know, they made some valid points and pointed out a couple of little criticisms, which, you know, are probably fair enough. <laughs> Rachel has taken what really is a small space and made it appear to be much bigger by using that diagonal. So you've got that lovely view coming out from the patio doors and you've got that nice seating area. It's a really nice space to be in, isn't it? She's also utilised that awkward angle and actually accentuated it and made it work within the space. The triangular beds add a lot mm. of interest as well. And there's not too many materials. Mm. Like she's like that. You've got a big block of paving, nice big comfortable yeah. space, a block of grass. You know, it's great for kids, great for the dog, mm -hmm. um, and it's just not too much going on. So it's really ideal, isn't it, for a small suburban garden? I think she talked about um, less is more and editing out, and mm -hmm. I think she's done that quite well. She's chosen a very limited palette of materials, and I love the way the paving brings a lot of light into the space. She's continued that lightness with the colour for the boundary treatment. She went with morning breeze on the boundary treatments, and it really accentuates the space. It makes it seem double the size, and it also showcases the planting beautifully. Yeah, and, and in fairness to her, she's done some really good planting. Um, mm -hmm. And, and as this garden develops, and it is one of these gardens that needs to develop, but as it develops, it's going to be really, really green and lush. There's some great trees in there, great evergreens, great ground cover, uh, and lots of really good edible plants as well. And we know that we have a Franco-Irish family here who love mm. to cook, so that's all good for the future. But there's one thing that I think is really unforgivable, and that is to use a toxic plant, accidentally even, in the middle of all that. And what was alarming to me is to not spend your 5,000 euro budget is absolutely crazy. It's a limited budget, it's tight, and you could have had more planting, more impact, more drama, and instead she just wasted it. Yeah, you know what, she definitely has all the ingredients here. I think it's just the recipe needs retweaking. It could actually make a really good show garden. I still feel I have a good chance of uh, taking this garden to bloom because it's a good, strong design. Laura and Tony now get to enjoy their new garden. I couldn't have imagined that this was going to be the finished product. I mean, she, she's just been wonderful and, and fantastic throughout the whole thing. The garden is amazing. We will be able to have people over. We will be able to see Sophia playing safely in the garden and relaxing on the evening as well. This is Rachel Gerrard's entry to the Super Garden competition. Has she done enough to make it to bloom? Next week on Super Garden, Alex Hollingsworth will attempt to win over the judges with her garden in a period property for Emer and Richie. I'd like to bring to Super Garden the Moorish gardens in southern Spain. Alex's brief is to create a family garden while also honouring the built heritage of the Glasnevin location. Today's definitely a reality check of how much hard graft is actually involved. Will Alex deliver or will Hazel's hillside design or Jerry's contemporary garden or Rachel's urban cottage garden win through to bloom. For details on everything that went into Rachel's garden, go to rte.ie slash tv slash supergarden. And to join the conversation and for competitions, it's Supergarden Facebook. These five garden designers will compete for the title Supergarden 2016. To win, they will each have five weeks to design and create a unique garden that proves they're ready to join the best of the professionals. The winning garden will be recreated at Ireland's premier garden show, Bloom, and will be representing Cooperknoll and Woody's at the festival. Each garden designer will have the help of our mentor, a passionate gardener who has been teaching design for 15 years, Monica Alvarez. The key word here is planning and planning seriously. Five garden designers, only one will make it to bloom. The third designer to take up the challenge is Rachel Gerrard. From Dublin, Rachel made a big career change five years ago. I was a legal exec for about 17 years and I had the opportunity to study horticulture at the Botanic Gardens. I loved it, so I decided to do the degree. 
Rachel has just completed four years study with the Botanic Gardens on Blanchardstown IT. I've picked up some practical skills and a lot of theory on the way. I, you know, have a good plant knowledge and I'm now hoping to combine all that now with some creative flair to create a show garden. We've selected this almost square back garden for Rachel in Tyrrellstown, West County, Dublin, belonging to Franco-Irish couple Tony and Laura, who have turned the house into their dream home. But sadly, everything dies in the garden. It's upside down now, isn't it? Upside down and inside out. Uh, <laughs> we have a half-dead maple tree and, and a non-functional veg patch. Um, so yeah, it, it's a perfect space to um, ignore. I'd love to be able just to turn my head, look at the window and say, wow, that's my garden. But now it's like, oh no, that is my garden. <laughs> We'd like a garden that we can relax in, something that's easy to maintain, yeah. um, a nice space where we can sit out and enjoy, but also where Sophia can wander around the plants and, yes. and that we can relax. Um, did I say we could relax? Yeah. Tony can certainly relax, but Rachel will have to keep her eye on the prize. Her budget is €5,000 with free hard landscaping. The design must have impact if it's to be recreated at Bloom. I would like to create a cottage-style garden but in an urban setting. Ideally with, say, edible plants and plenty of colour. I have all the theory now, um, uh, but now it's time to put it all into practice. This is Rachel's design. A vast patio will become an extension to the home and a family-friendly planting scheme of non-toxic thornless plants will answer the homeowner's brief on child safety. Mentor Monica wants to find out more about the non-poisonous planting. In terms of the planting, what have you thought for a planting? Plant edible, non-toxic, uh, soft plants, you know, no thorns. Fruit trees? Like yeah, I'd hope to incorporate yeah. fruit trees, um, apple, pear hopefully mm -hmm. and maybe some plum it's a safe environment yeah. it's not monica deciding who makes it to bloom that's down to the super garden judges and leone cornelius woody's design ambassador is championing rachel's plant choices i think the fact that she is focusing on edible plants and non-toxic plants is a very strong part of the concept if this theme of, of edible planting is carried through and you can get out there and work mm. and enjoy the garden, that's something that not, not every designer brings to the table. It's not going to just be a finished garden that you can entertain. Mm -hmm. It's a space you can go, in, go out and actually do some gardening. To make it beautiful as well, yeah. um, because it's not just this, it's also a show garden. It is a great entertainment space. Mm. Plenty of room for parties and dinner and family. Right now, all this is hinging on is the implementation. It mm. needs to be executed yeah. perfectly to even stand a chance. Rachel now has five weeks to bring her plan to life and create a garden that is worthy of a place at Bloom. Welcome to the, the quagmire. <laughs> Helping her on the road to the Phoenix Park are family, friends and dad, who has the best seat in the house. Well, I'm a daddy's girl anyway. <laughs> The discovery of two mature, non-toxic bushes gives Dad a well-earned break and Rachel something off-plan to consider. I was going to take out this viburnum, but I think actually I might leave it. I mean, it's, it's perfectly healthy. And that one as well, again, I might just cut it down, neaten it up. But I think they're salvageable, yeah. I think they live another day. <laughs> yeah, we won't kill you right now. <laughs> now just kind of hold and balance yeah. it. Now just go with that love. <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually, I love this. This is great crack. Much hurt. This is the easy part. Oh, okay. It appears smashing into the newly constructed shed wall was also easy. Is this our first casualty? He caught me there and I thought it was a concrete wall. <laughs> and it's only a bit of timber and a bit of mesh. Mm. So it only touched it with the digger. <laughs> only touched off it. And homeowner Tony is not too concerned. Is, it, is this a sign of how things well, are going to go for the rest of the world? And with the old patio up, the skip is full. A day completed. Great work, I'm delighted. Thank you. Woo! Okay.
The gang played an absolute blinder. The entire garden is cleared and the skip is full. So, yeah, that's a good day's work. Weather can impact on progress, so Rachel is making the most of the sunshine. Shake before opening. <laughs> Rachel is enveloping the garden with morning breeze, a light blue on the panel fence. I like it, it's nice and bright. They say make hay while the sun shines. I mean, seriously, we're going to have to do as much as possible today. Carp diem, seize the day. Because tempest few just <laughs> time flies. <laughs> yeah. Grant, right. Dad is here to help lay the new patio foundation. But first, he has some housekeeping. We only touched it. Yeah. Let that set a bit. The patio is a major design statement, and Rachel must plan the foundation. Yeah, that's fine. So that's massive. But anyway, there's loads of planting. We can put plenty in there. Yeah. And plenty over there. Oh, it's, it'll be great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Square. Rachel casts her paving lines. On the inside. On the inside. Door. 